Thanks for tuning in. Now here's the author of Remembership, New Thinking for Tomorrow's Membership Organization, Marketing Strategist Kyle Sexton. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good. How are y'all? <laughs> All right. Hey, we got a lot of stuff uh, to cover this morning, and not a ton of time to do it. Those of you who were in my session yesterday, uh, you were drinking out of a fire hose, and that's that happens sometimes with me. I apologize if we go a little fast, and it was kind of funny uh, yesterday. He kind of this morning. He said, he said after the session, he said. I, now I remember why I get so ticked off every time I come to a Kyle Sexton talk. Just too much information. Too much. I said, really too much? He said, well, then again, I look back on how far I've come in the three years since I saw you last, and now I'm doing all that stuff. So I guess it's not too much. I, I realize that we sometimes are overwhelmed with, with ideas and overwhelmed with technology and overwhelmed with innovation, because you can take it too far. And like Keith Woods was saying yesterday about innovation, Eight out of ten, uh, great uh, eight great ideas uh, working out of ten ideas total is a great average, and the opposite isn't so good. I, I beg to differ, because I think if you get if you get one or two or three out of ten uh, ideas and innovations that work for your organization, nobody remembers the failures. Nobody remembers them. Also, not every idea is uh, is going to make it to is going to make it to the playground. Right, so it's perfectly good, uh, it's, it's perfectly okay to have a bad idea. If we believe that ideas are a numbers game, we need to create a, pla a place that's safe for bad ideas. So if you wanna have more good ideas, have more bad ideas. And we need to encourage our teammates, really, to have more bad ideas. So here's, here are just a few of the, uh, of the bad ideas that, that I've ever had or come up with or stolen, right? Because in this business, we don't have research and development. We have rip off and duplicate. That's how this whole thing works. <laughs> there are no new ideas under the sun. Just new implications and, and new ways to, uh, to move along. My favorite author and uh, speaker, when you can find him or get there, is Seth Godin. How many of you are familiar with Seth Godin? Excellent. He wrote this blog specifically for chambers of commerce and associations. He said, under the heading of the pleasant reassurance of new words, it's a lot easier for an organization to adopt new words than it is to actually change anything. Real change is uncomfortable. If it's not feeling that way, you probably just adopted new words. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that just perfect for our, for our industry, for our business? We just adopted new words. Now, Sometimes the words change meaning on us, and we need to acknowledge that. So as a quick example, we're not gonna dive too much uh, in, into networking, of course, but there's nothing really new in networking, but uh, when, you, when you talk about networking in your chamber, that word has changed meaning in the last 10 years. The people who write checks to your chamber they see networking as full contact sales. And that's what they call it, full contact sales. They don't want to network with everybody. They want to network with their peers. So networking to them means I'm gonna, I'm gonna put on the pads, and I'm gonna go through this room, I'm gonna get from this side to that side, I'm gonna say no to everybody. And I'm gonna give them the Heisman, nope, oh, stay away. Did I do that right? Good morning. Football fans? No. So, one person got it. The, uh, <coughs> sorry about the jokes, that's, that's the best thing. The, so the idea here is that sometimes we are adopting new words. Other times, we're holding on to old words that have changed meaning on us. So instead of networking, we like to talk about network development. Connection events, right? Change, change the way that you talk about things if you want people to think differently about you. And when you treat your members differently, they will treat you differently. When you treat your members differently, they will treat you differently. They want to be treated differently. When you set up a pricing structure that treats each member differently, they will reward you. You've seen it over and over and over again. All right, so let's talk about what's next. 
Shameless plug time. I brought a whole box of books. I'm from Oregon. I don't want to take them back. <laughs> Help a brother out. Anybody that wants to uh, walk away with one of these fine specimens, uh, you can do that for ten dollars today, and it's uh, normally twenty one ninety five plus shipping if you order it online from Amazon. And if you're ordering ten or more, they're five dollars each. So get them for your order and uh, really help a brother out. All right. So let's talk about here. Here are some of my favorite things that we're going to talk about this morning because while folks upstairs are recycling the same sixty ideas that they've talked about for the last five years. <laughs> You know it. <laughs> you know it. Okay? We're going to talk about some stuff that's really cool and have impact on your organization. Some things that you can own and sell. Some things that are uh, brand new out there in the marketplace for Chambers of Commerce. Some things that I'm really excited about. Okay? I got to start talking fast when I get really excited. All right. So, just a quick rundown the member sales engine is a sales module uh, that lives on your website. Sells memberships for you 24 hours a day and never asks for a raise. They love it. <coughs> Sold as much as $25,000 a year for the Chamber of Commerce around 1,200 members. Uh, the Social Media Accelerator is what we talked about a little bit yesterday, at the end of yesterday's uh, session, so we're not going to go into great detail on that. Member Marketplace. How many of you know what Member Marketplace is? One, two, three, four. I think you just raised your hand back just to be you know, one of the cool kids. Is that no? So Member Marketplace is brand new and just gaining steam and uh, really excited about, about that. I'm, I'm putting that in place in uh, two, at least two of my clients right now. Uh, We're Local Review Engine allows you to collect customer feedback and testimonials. Even better, We're Local is a product that you can own and sell. I'll tell you about it. Uh, Restaurant Week uh, hits the visit, live, work, locate uh, concept and for those of you who weren't in the session yesterday, when you create a place where people want to visit, you create a place where people want to live. When you create a place where people want to live, you create a place where people want to work. When you create a place where people want to work, you create a place where businesses want to locate. And when you create a place where businesses want to locate, you create a place where people want to visit. Okay? Restaurant Week hits all of those things. Some of you who do not do tourism think, oh, we'll leave that to the tourism department. And guess what? Your CVBs sell what you make. You need to be in on these things, and rather than just let them have their let them have their thing, help them make it better. I understand there's turf issues in every organization, uh, and uh, believe me, where in the communities where where we've instituted Restaurant Week, we've had to have some conversations about turf and why that's just a, such a silly thing to talk about. Let's help our businesses. Uh, Chamber for Good, we're going to talk a little bit about that, connect for lunch, and we're going to talk just a, a little bit about tiered membership structures and how, how your pricing can help your <coughs> brand, can help your organization uh, even just appear to be more forward thinking, all right? All right, any, anything, anything else that, we, that you want to talk about that you're hoping to get a little nugget for before we get started and jump in? Turn on the fire a little. Anything else? All right. Well, here we go. Don't you love Prezi? I hope everybody gets motion sickness. We're gonna zoom in and zoom out, it's okay. All right. If you've never seen this scale before, and this is, this is what I was telling several of you over the, last, uh, over the last day and a half, that you need to come in here and see. Because we've been acting as if we are operating a membership organization, but we're in fact operating four. There are those in our membership that want to get something done through the chamber. They are joined because they want to get something done through the chamber. They also write you other checks for other things because they want to get something done through the chamber. It's very different than those who have to get something from the chamber. Want to get something done, have to get something from. And they have to get something from folks. If they don't spend their money with you, they're gonna spend it somewhere else. They have to get something from somebody. Right? They're trying to grow their business. Then we have involved and invested, and these are a continuum, and they go about 80 miles that way and 180 miles that way. So the involved piece doesn't necessarily mean that they have a ton of time. Maybe it, mean, maybe it does mean on the far end of the continuum that they are showing up for everything. 
Maybe on the far end of the investment spectrum there, it means that they're showing up for nothing. Invested doesn't mean that they're flush with cash. It just means they're not interested or they have less time than money. Involved doesn't necessarily mean they want to show up for everything. Sometimes it just means they have more time than money. Okay, make sense? All right, so each of these quadrants is a business profile and a community, a community of peers. They speak the same language. Okay, I, I actually have a whole presentation, a whole hour and 15 minutes, just on this scale. And I go through the names and we go through the business, uh, the, the types of businesses that are in there and the, and the profiles and characteristics of, of each business profile, and what they like, what they want from you. Okay, so this scale, when you share this with your board, will start, will start to help them understand and make sense out of the challenge that's facing you today. Some of you look at creating uh, membership tiers or whatnot, and you look at, and you, this, is, this is the only membership, part of your membership organization that, you, that you're acknowledging right now. So you, you create levels of here and here and here and here and here. But let me tell you, these folks will write you a bigger check if they never have to talk to these folks. <laughs> Ever. It's true. I've seen it over and over again. I've seen it over and over again. Okay. Is this new for you? Have you seen this before? Who has seen this before? Anyone? One? And are, have you used it with your board or staff or anything like that? Not yet. Okay. Well, I really encourage you to, to give this some consideration. Uh, I just did a, a, a webinar that's going to live on ACCP's uh, Chamber University that goes in great detail about this. So uh, that's getting sent over next week. If, for those of you who are, and there's many ACCP members here. Uh, you should go in there and check that out and get get really familiar with this. All right. This is what we talked about yesterday. This is the uh, this is the social media accelerator. We just launched one in Fayetteville. I'm not going to go into this a ton because we talked about it yesterday. But it does. It's a social media platform. That's a it's a silo on your website. However, we make it look like your website. Your members can get connected. It, it integrates beautifully with Facebook and Twitter, and now. Yahoo and LinkedIn as well. You can embed video on in, in this technology from YouTube, which is what we, we don't want people uploading to a site like this. We want them uploading to YouTube, the world's largest channel, and then embedding from there. You can display photos of your business. You can schedule events, a community calendar. You can join a group or create your own. You can get connected with other people in the network. And you can generate publicity using News Share, which we use to syndicate blog posts. They don't know they're writing blog posts. We changed the name from blog to News Share because you've got news, we want you to share it. Right? So simple. Our blog, our, our blog posting went up 425% instantly. The frequency of blog posts went up 425% instantly when we removed the word blog. Isn't that funny? Just changed it to News Share. Simple as that. All right, any, any, anybody have questions about that? I know that's like a minute and a half version of that. Anybody, anybody? Hey, you guys are so quiet. Mm -hmm. Want to some coffee? What was the name of that? It's called, I call it the Social Media Accelerator. We create a name, we create a unique name for it in every chamber that we, that we install. So the first one I have is called Face to Face. I don't recommend that name. But the idea behind that name was that we wanted to create kind of a visual uh, a visual Rolodex, kind of a digital Rolodex for people as they uh, as they attended our events and they could put a face with a name and it really did help for that. For some of the younger folks, a Rolodex is a paper system that's used to <laughs> track names. And All right, uh, so let's talk about restaurant week. How many of you have a restaurant week in your community? Raise your hand. One, two, one, one and a half, if you're thinking about maybe there is one. All right, so are you familiar with the concept? Restaurant week, very simple. Promote a week for people to get out of their kitchens and into a new restaurant, into an old restaurant, into a restaurant they've never tried before. It's not price marketing, but it's predictability marketing because you get your restaurant community together to uh, promote menu items at a predictable price. 
So you can have in Maine, this is the Maine uh, Restaurant Week, uh, which is one of the best I've seen anywhere in the country. I discovered Restaurant Week, you know, you have to like how I said that, I discovered. I discovered, I discovered Restaurant Week in Santa Rosa uh, when I was there uh, two years ago, uh, working on a consulting project for them, and every, they had like 200 restaurants were involved in Restaurant Week. It was insane, it was everywhere, you could not escape it. Every place you went into, they said, here's our menu, and here's our restaurant week menu. A much shorter, more concise menu that had predictable price points. 19, 29, and 39 dollar meals, three courses. And what, what, what the main restaurant week folks have done, it was started in Maine by an advertising agency that had restaurant clients in Portland, Maine, a very foodie town. And what it turned into is restaurants from other parts of Maine wanting to get involved. So it grew and grew and grew into the entire statewide Maine Restaurant Week. But what they did that's different than just promotion is they created an online marketing platform for every restaurant that gets involved. Why? Because they understood the value of retention. Once they got a new restaurant involved, they could keep them by building in a marketing system that the, that the restaurant could not extract from the campaign. Here's how it works. Every restaurant has its own unique login. They can, in their, in their profile page, set their own menu prices, change menu items as needed. They run this one or, two, one or two times a year. Additionally, anyone in the community, anyone in the user community, anybody that follows Main Restaurant Week and has a, has a coordinated mobile site along with it can follow their favorite restaurant. Follow along the same lines of, uh, of social media like Twitter and Facebook, but when you follow somebody through this website, you give your email address. When a restaurant decides they want to change their menu or make an announcement, they can post it in, in the main Restaurant Week website, and it gets sent out by email to the people that are following them. It's what we call sticky content. This website, as a part of the campaign, is active as an intermediary between the consumer and the business. Now the business is not going to let go of those folks who are following them, especially when they've got hundreds and <coughs> hundreds of them. Okay? And this is not through Facebook, but it shares, it syndicates to Facebook, as you can imagine it would. So anytime a new restaurant signs up and they get put in, it gets fed into Facebook and Twitter. Very slick, very slick system. And you can see visually on one page on the site, how many people or uh, how many restaurants there are and what cities they're in and what price points they're offering uh, they're offering food, food the menu items okay very cool very innovative program so let's take this into chamber world we decided uh, in our in my little beta tester backyard in Salem Oregon we're going to offer this for free to chamber members for free to chamber restaurant members. And we were so aggressive with it, we're just now finishing our first year of doing it. We did it twice in our first year. We did it in August. August wasn't the best time to do it, but we knew we needed to start one because we knew we wanted to do a bigger one in January. And we wanted that one to not be our first time. So we committed to our members that we were doing it twice a year. They love it. Our restaurants love us, especially those new restaurants that are trying to get their, leg, their foot in the door trying to get a leg up on competition, they will not drop their membership. Sticky, sticky content. Same thing with the social media accelerator. Anybody who joins and starts posting information on our website, if they decide they wanna drop, guess what happens to all of their articles that they've ever posted and have been search engine optimized? Guess what happens? Guess what happens? I bet you can guess. <laughs> Ban permanently. I like to do that one. You're out of here. Gone. And we send them a nice friendly little email right before we do that, say, hey, you're about to lose the um, 17 articles that are working for you on our website. Are you sure you want to drop your membership? Okay, it's a sticky content. You don't have to worry about chasing checks as much when you have retention rates through programs that are higher than your average without those programs. Sticky content. This is, a, this is a very low overhead kind of a project. Uh, I think you can, you can license this website from the folks 
and, and make it. If you're interested in that, just give me a call. I'm not selling for them or anything. I love what they're doing. I told them I'd try to help them out by giving them some feedback as we were their first uh, their first licensee in, uh, back home in Oregon to, to do this. So if this is of interest to you, uh, I think he's putting the price tag on it in the in the low four digits, like a thousand bucks or whatever for to, to set it up and then uh, a low monthly fee uh, to maintain it and host it. It really is a great value. Uh, we got turned around in two weeks from the time we said go to the time we had our own Restaurant Week website going. With our members populated, it's extremely easy to do. So I really, I really enjoy it, I really like it. Any questions about Restaurant Week before we move on? All right, if one comes up, fire away later. Feel free to raise a hand or shoot off a flare gun or anything like that to get my attention to get going. Uh, we're local, and this is developed by a, a friend of mine uh, back home in Oregon that, uh, he's a genius, he's a genius, and what he's done is he's created a, a form, a feedback form for businesses. And it looks like any other feedback form. How would you rate our service? May we contact you? First name, last name, email. How would you rate, how would you rate our service? One star, five stars. When I click on four or five stars, that customer feedback form changes into a, uh, into a public review form, a la TripAdvisor. Angie's List, all of those. It changes from a customer feedback form right in front of your eyes when you rate that a four or a five. <coughs> you slip. And then when you have finished writing your review, if you rated it a four or a five, it prompts you, would you like to share your review on Facebook and Twitter? If you do so, you just click allow, and it posts your review and it says, I just reviewed XYZ Restaurant, on we'relocal.com. Now the reason I'm sharing this with you is that Third River, the developing development company that created this, has offered this to Chambers of Commerce. And I think it's really innovative, this approach that he's taking with, with Chambers because he's offering you two options. Number one, you can, you can offer this to your membership for, I think it's for free, the first option is for free. And he just asks that you uh, do a little, do one or two email promotions and to help him get connected to some of the businesses in your area that, uh, that will most benefit from this. Okay, chiropractors really like it. Landscape, art, landscape designers uh, really like it. Uh, a lot of service businesses really like this stuff. Okay, option two is you can own it. If you're familiar with the technological term, white label, you can put your brand on this. This could be, uh, this could be the Stillwater Review Engine.com. It could be your chamber logo. Now, I understand a lot of chambers don't like the idea of getting involved in negative reviews. <coughs> but keep in mind that if there's a negative review, it doesn't get posted to the public site. It does get sent to the to the business, and they have a chance to follow up. Isn't this a great thing for your local business community to get feedback about how their service is so that you can improve, especially if you're in the tourism business, and we're all in the tourism business. Okay, this is a very helpful utility for business. All right, so one of the cool things too is that you can feed, and they set this up for you, that you can feed the public reviews onto another site. And these live, these positive review, reviews live on an independent third party website. It's not just the chamber that's a, that's a shill for their business. These are, can be found in search terms on the web. Okay, any questions about this? Yes? And how much is it if you own it? Uh, if you own it, it's, uh, I believe it's 197 a month, but you get to sell this to your businesses for 97, 197, or 297 a month. They show you how to do the whole thing. So it's a great sales opportunity. If you're looking for more products to sell, this is something that you won't find in the marketplace. We're all concerned about competing with our members. You won't find this in the marketplace. If you have a, if you've got a savvy marketing agency as a member in your community, in your chamber, you might want to introduce them to this. If you want it and you don't want to manage it, but you want it for your community and you want it for your chamber, choose option, choose option one, the free version. 
and get a, a marketing agency partner <coughs> to go sell this, and you can have it for free, they can go do all the work, they can make some money, you get the benefit, it helps your community, win, win, win. Yes? How do customers find it? So if I wanna go and search a business, how do I know to go to World Local? Great question. You won't necessarily know to go to We're Local, but when you're searching about a business, you may find the reviews on We're Local. If, if, uh, if you come to my store uh, and, uh, and you buy something from me and I have your email address, um, or if I don't, I hand you a card and say, just like TripAdvisor, if you enjoy, your, if you enjoy the service today, please let us know on we'relocal.com. Leave us a review. They go online, they do a review. Similarly, you have a customer base, you want to generate some feedback, generate some reviews, you send out an invitation to review our service by email. Click, they click a link, they go in, they fill it out. Simple as that. Okay. Simple. One time setup. Pretty slick. All right. This is what I get really excited about. Uh, I found these guys. See that? See what I did again? I found these guys at uh, at the ACCE convention in Louisville. Uh, where, which is where, also where I learned to pronounce Louisville. And so what this is, it, it's called Member Marketplace. And and you can very simply, let's see, if I, now we'll go to the All right. <coughs> very simply, this is a an online marketing platform for your members to post offers that are not just business to business, but business to consumer. Your consumer, the consumer audience can find these offers on your website because Member Marketplace technology lives in a 25 pixel bar that lives across the top of your website. And it says Member Marketplace, sponsored by your favorite credit union. Uh, and 302 offers today open. Click anywhere on that bar and beautifully, magically, automatically, that's made up a word, it, <laughs> it, it pushes your content down on your website. And it opens up. And it says, would you like to buy something, sell something, or request something? As a member of the general uh, public, you can, a user can request anything. So if your water heater blows up, and you've got family coming, and you've got, uh, family coming in on Friday afternoon, you need to have this sucker fixed by Friday at four. You can hop on and request, <clears throat> I have a 50 gallon water here that just exploded in my garage, or my basement, or in my house, and I need it fixed by Friday at noon. And those who are in the plumbing, handyman categories will receive that email notification <coughs> that someone has made a request in their category. Log on to Member Marketplace, and they're already signed up because what we do is we take your existing membership, we upload it into the system. What happens is, if you've got WebLink or Chamber Master, or I don't care what you have, the back end of these technologies talk to each other. So that's really slick. Anytime you sign up a new member, those two technologies talk to each other at midnight, and in the morning, that new member wakes up to an email and says, welcome to the Chamber. And here's your new member marketplace platform. Click here to complete your profile and to create your first offer. All right, so what kind of offers can they put in there? You can choose from a template of offers that they have in the system, or you can create your own. If you go to create your own, uh, if, you, if you go to create your own, it's a really cool, uh, let, me, let me review and see what, if I have a visual to match this one here. No, okay, good. It's better if you use your imagination because it's awesome. Uh, if you create your own offer, let's say we're doing an offer for business cards, right? That's the example that you and I were chatting about yesterday. Uh, a thousand business cards. It says, what, what are you going to offer? One thousand business cards printed. And what's uh, how much are you offering it for? Ninety-nine dollars. What's the retail value of that? Two hundred and twenty-five dollars. Little bar pops up. Says strong offer. If you were to change the offer price to $175, the bar pops up and says, we offer 11% savings, we offer. Below that, it gives you three different ways 
based on the form, based on the form you just filled out, three different ways to phrase it. And what happens is you can either choose one of those ways to, that they have uh, phrased it for you using some proven uh, phrase and wording, such as save 40% on 1,000 business cards. Or 1,000 business cards for only $99, save 40%. Okay, that sort of thing. Or you can create your own. Very slick technology, and so those offers live in categories. You've got 428.3 categories in your Weblink or Chamber Master or SBA or uh, CC Assist or whatever you're using. They will convert all of those categories for you into 12 uh, consumer-friendly categories. Okay, so there's really a lot of possibilities with this in terms of the offers. So you can view offers by category, you can also view offers on a map. You can also view members of view offers by category on a map. Okay, so the technology is really beautiful because the folks who created it are, are visual identity branding folks. They love visual design. They love technology that works differently. What this does, how many of you have hot deals or offers, B2B offers, member to member offers? What this does is it takes those and it pushes it to the front of your website because right now they're buried in your directory. And, and I love all of the technology companies upstairs who are working hard to create value by offering us those things, but sometimes I think they go, huh, remember, remember thing? Oh, okay, we'll do that, check. Got that off the list. It's not very, it's not very pretty, it's not very user friendly. They're not easy to find, you have to be logged in. Right? A business can only have, in your online directory, a business can really only have one offer at a time. But in this format, if you've got a health club member and they've got tanning specials and, and one month free trial and a summer membership and a personal training package, they can have unlimited offers because they understand that they can get new customers from all kinds of different places, okay? So your members can use every aspect of this. They can buy, sell, or request the public can reserve offers, can, they can grab some offers, and they can make requests. They can buy stuff, and they can make requests. So what this is not, this is not Groupon. <coughs> Groupon has deals, and Groupon takes a piece of the action. You know, the, you know that whole business model now. This is not e-commerce. There's no place to put in your Visa card here. You don't literally do the transaction in this software. Why? Because businesses want to keep their money. <laughs> Businesses want to keep their money, and if you provide them a tool that allows them to put their offers out there without taking a piece of the action, they go, wait a minute, this is a little too good to be true, right? So you can make any kind of request, as I uh, mentioned earlier, you can put all kinds of uh, details on there, whatever you want. Yes? Um, do people have problems getting their, their members or their clients to put deals on the marketplace? Being from Oklahoma, you know, it, it's like, you, you've got to like, it's like pulling teeth. And also, is this like available on smartphones? Like, if your website is mobile, is it available on your smartphone? Because I don't know about the mobile yet, because I haven't seen uh, my installation yet. However, uh, when, there's a science to getting people, uh, getting first users in to do something, right? Uh, with the social media accelerator, we open it up for, uh, High, uh, for folks who have a high likelihood of using it, right? So we go find our members who are already blogging. We, already, we go find businesses with this who are already putting offers uh, through other systems, right? Our members that we have relationships with, and we invite them to what, what I call a launch lab event. It's an invitation only launch lab event. And we're gonna bring them in, we're gonna show them, give them first look at the technology, and have them then and there upload their first offer. We're not gonna send them home with homework. We're gonna come and do it here. We're gonna help you get those offers in there before we launch it to the public. Because if the public starts to come on here, and they log in and they see eight offers, guess what, they're never coming back. Right, well, and the other thing is, is in 2011, smartphones outsold PCs by like 10% or something. So, most people, 
mean, younger kids or, you know, whatever, the younger generations are not going to go to a website. Right. They also have less money to spend. Big decisions, big purchases need big screens. If you're reading Mashable or Fast Company, uh, I understand that lots of shopping is taking place uh, with mobile devices, but big purchases have big screens associated with it. People are still making purchasing decisions with laptops. I'm not saying they don't have a, they have a smartphone application, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, and this is a brand new uh, product that's been on the market for a year and a few months, and it's getting traction. Uh, Tulsa just signed on there, uh, and so they're gonna be launching soon. Uh, Anaheim, California, my hometown, Salem, Oregon, is gonna be doing it. Dallas has been using it for a few months. Raleigh, North Carolina has been using it for over a year now. They have over 400 offers. They're getting 50 offers added a month. When you set an offer as a business, and a and you say, I'm only gonna offer 10 of these, or it expires June 1st, you don't have to go in there and pull it down as a business. It happens automatically. So these offers are expiring, yet in the communities that are using Member Marketplace, the number of offers just keeps growing and growing and growing. These guys love data, and they've got all kinds of analytical data on the back end, so that if you want to go sell a membership to another printer, you can say, there's been $30,000 in deals in deals taken by, uh, by the user community, by consumers, through this platform in the last year, and that's business that you're not getting. Now you get to go with real analytics, and say, here, this is a product that you get to use for free just by being a member of the chamber. Question. I was just going to ask you about the cost. The cost? How they handle it. Thanks. The, uh, <laughs> she's ready to buy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is, uh, if you're a thousand members, if you're, if you're fewer than a thousand members, it's $1.99 a month. If you're a thousand to two thousand members, it's $3.99 a month. If you're more than two thousand members, it's $5.99 a month. If you wanted to integrate with, if you use WebLink, there's a $50 Weblink charge, it's a $50 a month API fee. Um, if we all hang up on Weblink and say, stop doing that to our vendor partner that we love, uh, maybe they'll stop doing that. Uh, but, um, so that's not, a, that's not a fee to the uh, to member marketplace. So here's, 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 what I, here's what I love about it, here's what I did with it. I took the member marketplace concept and I went to, I went to our most likely sponsors. And who are your most likely sponsors in your community? Say it again. Banks. banks. <clears throat> who do banks compete with? Credit unions. Credit unions do not have customers or clients. They have Members. member marketplace can live on a credit union sponsor website as well as yours. This technology does not have to live only on your website. Okay, so we went to uh, one of our credit unions, the one who supports buy local the most, the one they, they hire, they have an employee who's job it is to promote the buy local program. So they're heavily invested in buy local and I went to them and I said, we have this platform, it's a perfect match for your buy local campaign. Here's how it works. I didn't have a de visual demonstration, we just have a coffee. I said I wanted to know if you're interested in it before I go to the banks. <laughs> uh, right? They they love this stuff. First of all, banks have the best technology. Credit unions are always scrapping for what's left in the technology area, whatever they can afford. They're always trying to keep up. They never can get that advantage in the technology side. They were really interested in the technology because it could live on their website. Because that 25 pixel bar that's installed with simple JavaScript code <coughs> could live on their website as well as ours. So our launch lab events, our uh, our, our video training that's going to live on our website to promote this is going to be all branded with our sponsor. Well, how much is our sponsor investing? We're a, in, in this first installation that I'm doing. We're a $399 a month kind of a client uh, for Member Map, uh, Member Marketplace. And what so what we what we pitched to our sponsor is and she said how much? Right? She's ready to buy. How much is it? I said, well, we're looking for a $30,000 sponsor. She goes, I, I said, over three years. Oh. 
they can't come up with 30,000. They can't even come up with 10,000 a year, but they can do $5,000 now and 5,000 six months from now. Okay. So what we did, we keystoned it. Not only did we get the product paid for, we got extra money left over. Okay, That's before we're even using it to sell memberships. In the health club business, I spent five years in the health club business before I was in the chamber of commerce business. And one thing we always knew to be true in the, in the, in the health club business is that the best time to sell a membership to a health club is before the health club is done being built. You see the little trailer out in front? They got blueprints on the wall. They say, this is where this stuff's gonna be. There's gonna be a swimming pool here. It's gonna be great. Oh, it's gonna be really nice locker rooms here. You get to imagine it before it's done being built. And that's the best place, the best time to sell that membership. Because after it's done being built, you take a tour, you give it, boy, that guy, that guy sure is sweating a lot. Uh, it doesn't smell real fresh in here. Uh, does, does that man have no neck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those, weight, those weights look pretty heavy, right? The reality starts to set in. Best time to sell these things is before it's actually done being built. And we've done this over and over and over again. When we launched our Young Professionals program, we launched it with 20 grand in the bank through sponsorship before we even launched. Because we could go talk to people about the idea and we can connect eye to eye. As soon as you start putting tactical things in front of people in a sales process, we start losing them. We lose the eye contact, they start getting analytical. Physiologically, when you are using the analytical side of your brain, you have to turn off the emotional side of your brain. You buy emotionally, you justify intellectually. So if you think that you're selling something from paper, you're not, okay? Selling from paper is a race to the bottom. Selling eye to eye, using your imagination, is a race to the top. Any other questions on member marketplace? There's all kinds of cool stuff here. Any other questions? Yes, please. I looked at this and looked at the demo, and the one thing I still, I'm not crazy about having that at the very top of my website for all my navigation and everything else. Somehow it feels like that, is it too much? It's only 25 pixels, though. Teeny tiny. Teeny tiny. I, I understand. Um, it's not nearly the size of your advertising banner, of your, of your sponsorship banners that you have on your website. Not nearly the size of that. Just go look at the Raleigh Chamber website, and you can see it in action. Go to RaleighChamber.com, you can see exactly what we're talking about. It's it's uh, it's not it's not invasive or intrusive at all. All right, so here is uh, here is an old version of of the member sales engine, and this is a tool. Uh, this is a landing page. If you're familiar with what a landing page is, it's a reason for people to leave us their information. We're offering them something of value. Uh, in exchange for some contact information. So rather than rather than clicking on join, join the chamber and seeing a list of benefits or a form, which is not how we sell a membership in person, we created an online module that sells a membership more like what you would get in person. So when someone uh, when someone comes onto this particular uh, website, and they fill out they fill this out. This video is auto playing as if they walked in and they said, I'm interested in joining the chamber. This is welcome. Thanks for your interest in joining the chamber. In just a moment, you're gonna be in the driver's seat of a tour of membership information of the Chamber of Commerce. You're gonna discover what thousands of businesses already know. That you can get more business, better connections, timely information, and extra exposure by joining the chamber. But first, please take a moment to tell us about your business by filling out the form below. They fill out this form, and yes, we do get Mickey Mouse taking tours every once in a while. <laughs> the point is not that we're going to hold this information hostage. We want to give people a legitimate chance to tell us who they are. <coughs> no salesman will call. Okay, oops. So what happens when they go to the other side of that is a multifaceted tour that has, uh, it takes about uh, between eight and nine total minutes. It has on the left-hand side, uh, on the left hand side, it has the different topics, 15 to 60 seconds. 
on every, on every topic. They can skip ahead to the points that are most important to them, and they can get out of that tunnel anytime they want by clicking on Join Now or Get Started. There's two Join Now links on every page. And this technology uh, results in one out of 10 people, if you, if you hook up the Join Now button to a literal uh, sign up, put your credit card in, one out of 10 people who take the tour will, will join online right away. The other nine are leads. So if you don't have a lead generation form for people who are interested, then you're missing an opportunity. Okay. Oh, but if we sell memberships online, our membership salespeople are commission-based and they, they lose money on that. Well, how many leads are you generating from your website currently? Okay, because this particular installation for the Northern Palm Beach County Chamber is generating 250 tours a year. Okay. So keep that in mind. If you don't have some sort of lead generation tool on your website, start it. Anybody familiar with Chamber for Good? They just started in February. Are you doing it yet? It's a really interesting concept. What they've uh, what they've done is they've uh, they've created a, a Chamber platform that you can own for your community. It's a centralized website, so chamberforgood.com, and it'll be slash your community name on there. And uh, it's it's a clearinghouse for uh, for charities needs in your community. So you can there are uh, there's a way to donate to your local charity, your charities sign up and have their own uh, business profile in here. There's a way for charities in your community to say, uh, we need, uh, we're, doing, we're, doing a, we're doing a community painting day. We really need all of our facilities painted. We're looking for people and families that want to come and help us paint, right? So it's, it's a clearinghouse for volunteer opportunities. Uh, this is also a place where businesses who have uh, just gone through and, uh, and Got all new phone system, or all new furniture, or all new conference room furniture, what have you, tables. Say, we've got eight tables, eight eight foot tables that we need to get rid of. This is a place where you can post that for charities in your local community <coughs> area to come get that stuff, okay? If you are really, really, really tired of your charitable uh, members always asking for discounts, and you want to crank it up a little bit, you want to bring them up to the minimum dues investment, that you are um, that you're charging for your one person for profit business. This is a great it's a great carrot to offer. Okay, we're raising all of our charities dues up to the, the minimum for a for profit business, and we're also giving you this because this is a way for you to raise more money. Here's what I love about Chamber for Good: highly sponsorable. There are four sponsorship uh, locations on the chamberforgood.com website for your community. Three of them are yours to sell, okay? You don't have to turn on the sponsorship feature. You can, you can keep it pure and just do it for free. You can have the free version if you choose, okay? So, great one, love that one. I'll be doing a webinar on that on my website soon, so if you want an in-depth tour, uh, there will be a webinar on that. There's already a web, if you want the in-depth tour on Member Marketplace, uh, go to kylesexton.com, click on organizations, and you'll see that I've got, uh, I've got some webinars uh, scheduled for a member marketplace. Uh, connect for lunch, how many of you are doing connect for lunch? Anybody? One, two, cool, you like it? Yeah, no, you don't like it? No. Our members love it. Do your members like it? Well, I think it has just gotten to be a problem where the same people are starting to meet back, meet back up again for lunch. Uh -huh. We've been doing it for a while. Mm -hmm. And, and that part you don't like? Well, they don't like it because they don't want to go to lunch with the same people they went with six months ago. They want to keep meeting new people. Yeah, they think they want to keep meeting new people. But. <laughs> so the way that that works is if you, and I believe, uh, if you have a thousand members or more, yeah, I, I believe they're still only working with a thousand member organizations, but if you have neighboring chambers within a reasonable driving distance uh, that make up a thousand members or more, you can, you can get involved with this. There's no cost to the chamber. Uh, and, and now that I'm no longer employed by, the, by my chamber, and I'm a member of my chamber, I actually go to these. And you know what they end up talking about? They talk about how much they love the chamber at these meetings. <laughs> oh, I just think this is so cool, because I really don't like the business after hours. I don't really like the morning networking thing. I don't do it all that stuff. And I can't always make the luncheons, and this and that. This is really cool, because you know, there's so many opportunities, three or four times a month, to get connected. So it's an automated service, online, 
that connects your members with each other for lunch, taking them to a different member restaurant each time, connecting them with different people each time. The more you promote it, the more you get the generate new people into the system, uh, the, the higher level of satisfaction you'll have from your members for this. Your members pay a subscription for this. I used to think that was gonna be a problem. Turns out, no, it's not a problem. We've got 80 of our members doing this. And we have data on the back end that shows us exactly how much, how many dollars we're putting into our local restaurants just through this program. Pretty slick. There, every restaurant on that list will not drop their membership because we're providing them at least one lunch a week and we can put that into real dollars. Cool program, check it out. All right, so here's where some of those live on the member matrix. You got the, the members that, that I see using Connect for Lunch are, are usually here. They're, they're, they're not so involved. But and they're 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 also they also tend to be uh, they tend to like to separate themselves from the get something from folks. Okay, there's a mix. There's, there's financial planners in there. Uh, there's uh, there's real estate agents. There's uh, bank executives. There's uh, printing sales reps in there. Uh, so uh, here's the. Here's the accelerator right there. Here's the, this, the social media accelerator. So um, let's see what else we have to talk about. Yes, membership tiers. So here's what I want to share with you about membership tiers as it relates to uh, as it relates to the member matrix. There's four squares that I refer to as the member matrix. What's interesting is the less they pay, the more they need. Membership tiers can be counterintuitive. The less you talk about, you got a short little list. These long, these these muddy little lines here, and that nice artwork. This this represents a short list of benefits. The more you focus on one or two or three or four benefits instead of forty, the more they'll invest. Given too many options, a consumer will choose none. Given too many options, a consumer will choose none. Okay, so rather than, do you wanna be a member, yes or no? If you've got five membership levels, do you wanna be a member, yes or yes or yes or yes or yes? Okay, no becomes, no becomes a couple hundred dollars. Okay, that's the psychology of, and we've got a whole bunch of content on membership tiers, and if you're moving in that direction or if you're considering moving in that direction, I am gonna be doing a webinar in the next month, so stay tuned to my website for that. It would like to be free. Everything I do is free. Uh, so here's where membership, here's here's where membership to tiers can live on the on the matrix. Um, somebody give me your lowest dues amount for a one person for profit business. Three fifteen. Three fifteen. One eighty. One eighty. One thirty five. Yes. Oh well, goodness, I can't do this. I pay ten times. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> one eighty. We're gonna go with one eighty. You got the one eighty membership. You have a 375. You have a, uh, you got, you got an $825 membership. And maybe you have a $1,700 membership. And you got a $3,500 membership. And a $5,000 membership. And a $10,000 membership. Okay, your memberships in, in tiers need to have, need to speak to a specific member segment. Remember what I said earlier about most of us want to create levels. We recognize we only recognize one membership organization. So we, we take our networking events and we say, come to more networking events, more tickets for business after hours. Well, that works from here to here, but it doesn't work from here to here. Quit talking about business after hours to these folks unless you're talking about sponsorship. Okay, a lot of folks say, uh, you know, our sponsors are investors. Not if you ask them. You say, why do you sponsor our events? They say, we like to be involved in the community. Sponsorship is a function of our involvement in the community. So don't be surprised that your sponsors are right here. Okay, here's the thing though. Your universities, your hospitals, your large employers, the city, county government, they're all over here. 
big community stakeholders, they're all in that top left-hand quadrant. If you set up your structure, as we mentioned, 180, 375, 575, 800, 1500, 3000, 5000. The folks over here, they think they're over here. They buy over here. Okay? If you've never read Seth Godin's book called uh, All Marketers Are Liars, it's the best marketing book on the planet. However, he wrote that for people, for marketers and for aspiring marketers, and ironically, he missed the mark. The book wasn't selling because he insulted his audience with the title. All Marketers Are Liars. Oh, great. I don't read that book. A jerk. So if you see it now, it's crossed out. It says All Marketers instead of Our Liars. It says Tell Stories. Okay, it's not that all marketers are liars. It's that consumers are liars. Consumers lie to themselves every day about the value of products and services. There are consumers, maybe some in this room, that believe a $200 pair of shoes are better than a $40 pair of shoes. Can you believe that? <laughs> some of you are like, God, you're such an idiot. They are more valuable. $200 pair of shoes is awesome. <laughs> All right, so some of you are throwing eye darts at me right now with that comment. So the idea, though, is that you've got to give people choice. And when you give people choice, they will reward you. They will reward you. All right, so we're running low on time. And we have gotten to all of these things. And uh, so I want to see what amount, what of these you want to talk about. Any questions, any comments, any thoughts? Any flares? Rotten Tomatoes. Yes? With Chamber for Good, is it searchable by... Okay, so I'm the program manager for education, and okay. I would like to see schools using it mm. to promote the things that they need for the partner program, for our members and my partners to be able to support the schools. Yes. Can they search by opportunities? Can they say, we're an engineering firm, we want to help with science, technology, math, <coughs> is it Yeah, I believe, it, I believe it's searchable, yeah. In fact, I think there's a great opportunity as more and more chambers are getting involved in workforce development, working closely with schools. Your schools really like to tap into that charitable kind of thing, right? You've got, and you've got, you've got private schools that have a charitable function as well. And you have, uh, you have, and a lot of times, uh, the public school will have a, a booster association that is a, that's a foundation, right? They can get involved with, with this as well. So. Uh, I don't think you have to even limit it specifically to, to charities. I think any nonprofit organization would see would see value in this. What else? Anything else? All right. So I wanted to uh, I want to just I want to just wrap up. I want to four I need four volunteers to tell me one thing that they got from either my session yesterday or today, they're gonna to take back and they're actually going to implement. Four volunteers, one thing, you're actually going to take back and implement. Chamber for Good. Chamber for Good? Who said that? I did. You did. Anamoto. Cool. Anamoto, yes, that was from yesterday's session. Awesome, my dude. Yes. My board is gonna see that matrix at our retreat. Yes. <laughs> boilerplate. The boilerplate, yes. Five sentences. One paragraph about who you are and why you're cool. It's not your mission statement. Okay? You guys are on a roll. What else? I got 30 seconds left. What else? All right, Rogi. Yes? Um, I, I just want to say we are at Chambers that's considering going to tiers, and I think that that's probably the direction that we're going. And when I look at offering it like this, I can see my way clearer to how a tier structure can be very successful when you have really specific things to offer like this. Yeah, absolutely. To give you an idea, uh, the, in my chamber I talk about all the time, Salem, 325, 650, uh, 1100, 2500, 5000. And there's a new membership coming in the $10,000 area. Before we started membership tiers, before we had choice, that was a similar scale from our employee count at the bottom to the top. We had one member paying $5,000 when we started this. Today we have 34. 34. I hope for that investment, what do they get for that? What's in it for them? They get everything. What's but we, uh, 
That's a really good question. That sounds like a fine question. You and I should have a conference call. No, seriously. And what are they getting? Because what I'm hearing is I'm getting a lot of the, oh, we're supporting the community, all this wonderful stuff. But as I've been listening to so many speakers here, the with me theory is very prevalent these days in business. Absolutely. And so if I'm going to invest $10,000 in the sale of more, and by the way, it's a very nice community. Oh, thank you. Capital state. We do take credit cards. Good. <laughs> Anyway, given that, what are they getting? So at that particular level, they're not getting, they don't want to talk about any of this stuff down here. So what they are getting is, uh, they get a force in our golf tournament. They get positioned on, a home pa on our homepage uh, with the rotating logo on our homepage. Not because they need the visibility, but because they want the positioning. And they want to be associated with the other businesses who are also spending a ton of money on it. Okay, Safeway doesn't care about any of the benefit a major grocery chain, chain doesn't care about any of this stuff down here. But they continually come up with their from their public policy department that five thousand bucks a year because they like to be associated with the workman's comp association, with uh, with the business law firms that invest at that level, with all the financial institutions, with the other grocery chains. Right? They don't want to be the one not on the list. They don't want to be the one not on the list. I'd be happy to talk to any of you about uh, any of those things as I'll be here uh, until about 11.30 or 11.45 today. Uh, thanks, y'all, very much for having me. Thank you.